Hey everyone, Nick Barber here. I wanted to show you a neat effect in Adobe Premiere that can make your videos look really polished and professional if you have, say, a still image that you want to put over top of video. Let me show you this effect over here in the right-hand window. My report's playing, background blurs, still image comes up, rotates through, into position, and then goes on to the next shot. It's really easy to do, and it looks really good. So let's go over here to my project panel, my project window, uh, where I have this clip already set up. And right about, say, here is where I want to start the blur. So I'm going to go into my effects panel and look up Gaussian blur. I can spell it. Let's see, here we are. Drop that right on. Go up into my effects controls pane. Now my cursor is right at the spot where I want my blur to start. So we're going to hit the stopwatch to keyframe the blurriness at zero. And move down maybe just a little bit. See how that looks. And let's go up to about 50. And the important thing here is you want to click repeat edge pixels. Because notice here, you sort of get a little bit of vignetting where the black from the no video is, is coming through. So if we click repeat edge pixels, that'll fix that. So we've got our blur blur uh, set in. Let's see how that looks. That looks great. So right where the blur stops is where we want to put our still image, which happens to be a cutout from an email promotion that this company did. And um, if we left it like that, obviously it would look really boring. So let's go ahead and add some effects to it. Figure out where exactly we want to end first. Let's say that this will be the start of our next clip. That gives us about from eight, gives us about four seconds, which is pretty good. So first what we want to add here is basic 3D. This allows us to rotate and move this still image in X, Y, and Z axes. So X from left to right, Y from up and down, Z in and out. And what we're going to do is we're going to keyframe that. So let's get our image situated. And now I'm going to do basically what we saw in the beginning here, where it sort of rotates from left to right, and it's got a little bit of a slant to it as well. So we'll do that. So let's get our image set up here. So we're basically going to scrub these numbers until we're happy with the starting point of our image. That looks good. Tilt it a little bit. Distance to image is sort of your zoom in, zoom out. Maybe make it a little bit bigger. Now we're also going to have to use the motion uh, numbers, the position, specifically the Y number here to move it down. And it's not a science here. You just have to sort of get it to the point where you like the look of it. Okay, so let's start there. So I'm going to click my keyframes on position, swivel, tilt, and distance to image. Then let's bring our cursor all the way down. We don't have to bring it to the end because we can make the keyframes and move them to the end. But let's get where we want the image to end. sort of like that. Maybe let's bring it in a little bit. Okay, good. So let's bring those down to there. And now one of the effects I like with keyframes that you don't see used as often as it should be is the easy ease function. Basically, if you have these two keyframes, you have a start end, you have a start point, and you have an end point, and everything in between is calculated linearly, so it'll move evenly through. Now, the easy ease in and the easy ease out will um, will make it speed up in the middle, so that it slows down into the end. Let me show you what I mean. So we play here, everything looks good. Now let me add an easy ease in to this. And you'll see how it will change. Starts off, go on normal speed, speeds up a little bit, and slows down as it gets in. 
and let's add an ease out on these. Right click, temporal imp imp interpolation, and ease out. So now let's see how that finishes up. Now what we should see is it should start off slow, speed up, and then end slow. Looks pretty good. Now you can play around with this. You can change the swivel and the tilt and the easy ease. Maybe something's not working for you. Maybe your image is different. But this is the basics of how to do this effect. So now at the end, um, actually, I'm sorry, at the beginning, we want to add a fade in to our crazy.png. So let's hit Control D. Shortcuts are very important here. So um, don't forget that cra uh, Control D is to add the default transition. Whether you're talking about um, audio or video, if you hit Control Shift D on Windows, uh, you'll add transition to the audio. Whoops, I'm opening up my screen capture stuff here, which I don't want to do. Okay, now we're back in business here. So let's see how that looks. That looks pretty good, but I'm not crazy about this easy ease at the beginning. So let me go ahead and highlight it. Right click, temporal interp interpolation, and linear. That's going to change it back. Let's see how that looks now. Let's play from the beginning here. Okay, maybe what I want to do is bring this a little bit sooner. Now, since I moved that, my keyframes changed, so I got to slide them down a little bit. Okay, one last thing I want to do to give this a nice polish is add a drop shadow. So over here, grab drop shadow, put it on. You don't see much change because we've got to go in here and play with some of the some of the uh, sliders here. So let's turn up the opacity a little bit. You see that shadow come in a little bit more. Let's move it a little bit further away good and let's add up the softness so it doesn't look so obvious now let's take a look that gives it some depth away from uh, our blurred background I think it looks pretty good it's an easy effect it's done quickly and it can give a nice polish to your reports so thanks for joining us here